Welcome to this new episode of the Smart and Sustainable City podcast. In the next few episodes, we are going to talk about urban mobility with some of the most innovative companies in this field. Los Angeles commuters spend 119 hours each year stuck in traffic. If you're in Jakarta, Indonesia, you can multiply that time by three. Traffic congestions are on the rise everywhere. Cities around the world are taking action, limiting access to private vehicles in city centers and managing their own fleet more effectively, promoting public transportation, combined with the use of bikes, of shared vehicles, and of electric scooters. Nevertheless, cars are still an essential mode of transportation for many. Increasingly, these cars are connected, producing a massive amount of information, which can be used by cities to reduce congestions, improve the driver's experience, and create new service opportunities for clever organizations. In this episode, we talk with Asaf Weisbrot, the chief commercial officer of the tech startup Autonomo. 22 million real vehicles around the world use Autonomo's and its partners' technologies. Together, they enable many use cases and services to feed real-time live car data into data platforms used by cities and fleet owners to manage and improve their operations. My name is Asaf Weisbrot. I am Autonomous Chief Commercial Officer. I grew up in the north of Israel. I studied computer science in Tel Aviv. And today I live in a small village. We voted for going to the countryside, but we loved living in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is an amazing city. But mobility, congestion, transportation, parking were definitely a big issue that pushed us out of Tel Aviv. Today I live in a small village, slightly north of Tel Aviv, called Mishmeret. Very, very small one, 170 families. I really like it that it's still an agriculture place. I'm happy to raise my kids in a very innocent, I would say even naive environment. One way cities are dealing with congestion is public transport. And isn't Tel Aviv constructing a metro right now? Yes, uh, right now Tel Aviv is in, in, the, in the middle of uh, building a, a metro. Uh, that will go actually not just in Tel Aviv, but in the entire, let's say, greater Tel Aviv and, and uh, the whole uh, region. Uh, yes, it's, it's a much needed uh, mean of transportation that could be clean and transfer, uh, and transfer many people from one point to the other, rather than having everyone trying to reach into Tel Aviv in the morning with their car and look for parking and find the parking and pay for parking. So that's a common challenge with many cities. There's been a rapid urbanization in the past years, and the United Nations is predicting that this will continue. And public transport is one way to alleviate the challenges of mobility, but we can't do without vehicles in the city. Yes, this is very much a very, you know, contemporary uh, problem. I think that, uh, you know, in this sense, Tel Aviv is much more like uh, London and much more like uh, Paris uh, and Geneva than it is like the rest of Israel. And I think that, you know, if, if you are uh, frequenting in, in Paris, you, you always find that the periphery is, uh, is, is, is blocked. And if you're going to London, the M25 is blocked. And it's the same for those arteries that are surrounding Tel Aviv. And most of the day when you need them, they're blocked. And uh, in order to deal with pollution, you can definitely go for electric vehicles. I think today the, the infrastructure in the cities does not allow for everyone to go into electric vehicles in terms of charging uh, uh, stations. Uh, and still, you know, if everybody went to electric vehicle tomorrow and there were enough charging station, you still had to manage congestion. It's the same cars and it's the same ideas. And there are, aside from people going in, you know, commuting for work, there are still logistic cars and, and, and technical cars and official cars and government cars that need to go in and out all the time. And, you know, rather than wait for a metro to be built and rather than wait for a, a, everyone to go electric and shared mobility, we need to start better managing congestion and better managing traffic and better planning for traffic today. And this is something where uh, actions could be taken today, but not enough is done. How was Autonomor created and what main challenges was Autonomor seeking to address? 
Autonomo was uh, founded uh, over four years ago, a young Israeli startup. The startup model is very common in Israel. Uh, Autonomo wanted to solve a very simple but crucial challenge for the automotive world. Uh, there was a lot of data produced and collected uh, in cars, but very little done with it. Partially very little done with it uh, for making the city smarter. The cars and the vehicles in the cities are becoming smarter. They're becoming connected. They are aiming to be increasingly autonomous and as a result are producing a lot of data. There are many ways of using the data for improving safety on the road, imp improving the, the driver's safety and the passenger safety, uh, improving congestion, improving the ability to cope with extreme weather, improving the ability to cope with road hazards, in improving the, the ability to generate more efficient parking and find parking spot more efficiently. All those wonderful technologies that went into the vehicle with new sensors that went into the vehicle and, and, and created very valuable data had a very small impact on the potential consuming side, but what it can do to the uh, potential garage, what it can do for an insur automotive insurance company, for a smart city. And Autonomo uh, understood er early on that th the data is not accessible enough. Uh, Autonomo's role is to make this data more accessible commercially, legally, uh, from privacy perspective, and of course, technically and from, from point of integration, because Autonomo provide, provides one point of access to the data uh, where a potential city like Geneva can access one point and get access to millions of data uh, points uh, generated by vehicles uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the area of Geneva, for instance. And that data was meant initially for the user, the driver. This same data can be used by the city to improve its operations. This is correct. Uh, again, it's always for the driver. If, if um, uh, you know, if the drivers uh, uh, allows us to use the data to improve the city or murder, make the roads safer, uh, it is still for the driver or for the drivers or for the greater good. Uh, but today, uh, cars are generating uh, signals from ultrasonic sensors that allows us to assess the parking situation in every parking lot. Uh, they generate signals that are telling us that there is a, a very foggy area. And they tell, they generate a signal that is, that is telling us that there's a heavy rain in a certain area. And it, we know it in seconds. And after seconds, the city can actually respond. And part of the work we do with different players in the world, in, in Europe and also in the US, and also in APAC, by the way, is help those technology organizations that are supporting the smart cities, actually providing them a, an external technology support to provide actionable items from data so that they can send a police car to a foggy area to alert the drivers before the first accident and not after. To understand that there is an unexpected slowdown in traffic and maybe change the dynamic traffic speed signs before the accident is happening and not after the first uh, driver didn't hit the brakes at the right time, which of course is generating much more of a congestion later because you have to deal not only with the slow traffic, but also with an accident. The cars are becoming sensitive cells for the city, like almost living cells of a human organism that enables the city to respond to a change in its environment to not just respond, but maybe also take proactive actions for what might be coming out of uh, the information collected by all those sensors. Exactly. And, and I think also in terms of budget efficiency, some of those car sensors could replace uh, infrastructure that the city is paying for. If the city is paying today for someone to count traffic signs, and we can use cars that are using their ADA system uh, to count those signs, that we can replace a very expensive task with something that, that is much less expensive 
and can count all the signs in the city very frequently. Uh, if we're using parking sensors uh, that are embedded in the pavement, we can use the, the data coming out of a parking sensor or of a car, what we call it, ultrasonic sensors, uh, in order to assess the parking situation. I don't think uh, you know, infrastructure sensors could be tomorrow replaced. It has to be a blend, a hybrid of uh, dedicated sensors and vehicle data. But I think the use of multi-layered uh, city data between some that are getting a uh, location uh, and speed from the cars, some that are getting uh, to, to define the, the flow on a specific uh, traffic corridor, some that are monitoring uh, the parking situation and the weather situation could definitely be uh, uh, very helpful for smart cities and help them react better, plan better and forecast better and eventually budget better. All those sensors produce different types of data. Shouldn't these flows of data be sanitized and in order to be aggregated? How do you ensure that all this information gets connected to produce the right insight for the city? So that's exactly what Autonomo does. Uh, Autonomo is, is, is a neutral platform in terms that it doesn't compete with the, with the car manufacturers on data collection. We never go into the car. We work together with them to get the data from, from their cloud. And we never compete with the applications and services that are using the data. We are a data access layer. We are the, the best vehicle data access layer, but we only provide access to the data. All those data pipeline activities that you mentioned, normalization of the data, harmonization, searchability, sanitization, a, a, a cleanliness, quality check, uh, all those are exactly what Autonomous Platform is doing in order to make the data accessible. It's impossible to expect every smart city and every uh, 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 traffic technology company to do, it, do, to do it on their own behalf when Autonomous is specializing on doing it once and, and, and for everyone. But that's exactly the purpose of the platform. And we're talking massive amount of data. Give us a sense of how much data gets produced by a fleet of cars in the city. The fleets are very a lot in terms of size and in terms of how many data points they generate. But I can tell you that Autonomo as a platform and managing over 20 million cars is tracking over 200 billion miles per year. So that is, that is a lot of data. You were mentioning that all of that data gets collected, aggregated, sanitized, and you do that through cloud technology? Indeed. Part of uh, uh, dealing with the ability to grow and scale and deal with those amount was the decision that, that of course, that this is going to be a cloud-born company. This is how we implement uh, the technology. And uh, I think that this is something that is uh, allowing us to deal better uh, with the demanding technology and also with the ability to, to scale and, and cater for, for huge amounts of data. So there's a number of very sensitive data that cars produce. And that raises the question of privacy and, and security. How do you ensure that that data that you deal with in the cloud remains private and secure and doesn't uh, entrench on the privacy concerns of citizens? So, indeed, this is a primary concern to Autonomo and not only that we make sure uh, uh, that that privacy such as GDPR in Europe and CCPA and others in the US and, and, and in Japan uh, are, are maintained. We are also providing privacy technology. And there are two very important elements there. One very important element is that everything is consensual. And as soon as you receive consent from the driver, of course, the data could be shared. And the other thing is that we need to make sure that only the data intended by the driver is shared. And, you know, not only making sure that we are doing it okay, we provide others with technologies uh, that help digitalize the consent. So we provide a, 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 our consent management hub, which allows OEMs, for instance, to easily interact with their drivers and very transparently explain to any driver what data am I using? What data am I sharing? 
and who is exactly going to get this data and allows them to easily provide the driver with control over who is getting what data. Because if I agree to share my position, speed, and heading with my insurance company, it doesn't mean that I want to share it with every insurance company. And it doesn't mean that I want to share it with my garage. Maybe maybe with my garage, I only need to share my car health data and they don't need to know exactly where I am. So you're allowing a market, a new market to take place between the driver and the provider of services by which the driver or the owner of the vehicle it allows the data produced by his vehicle to be then exchanged against a benefit. Absolutely. Uh, for getting access to specific services, you know, those services depend on data. And as of this can be, this can be, of course, for a, a, a private consumer, but this could be also for someone that manages a fleet of vehicles. Absolutely. And that is interested to get information out of this fleet of vehicles. And this could be for trucks or lorries. This could be for somebody that, that is operating some uh, electric vehicles made available uh, to the public in the city. Uh, th there could be multiple different type of use cases and applications. And this is a great point, a great point. And I think eventually when you when we will check historically, we will see that fleets and fleet owners, fleet operators, and, and the entire ecosystem of fleet were the ones who actually pushed the use of data harder than anyone before. Because imagine that, you know, I don't know, 40% of vehicles are sold into fleet or 30% of vehicles are sold into a, a kind of fleet ownership. But the amount of data points and data generated by fleets is much higher because the fleet car is always on the road. And when you commute, you use the car maybe one hour a day. You drive a half an hour here and half an hour home, you know, half an hour to work and half an hour home. You don't generate a lot of information. The fleet owner is generating a huge amount of information because when they get into the car, they drive for eight hours and they generate information for eight hours. And of course, the first consumer of this data should be the fleet operator because that would help them understand the logistics better, do route planning better, cargo planning better, and understand the car health. And the derivatives of the car health is the financial health of the organization. Should I be selling this truck now or should I wait until the warranty is ended or should I... Uh, replace it with a new model now. So all these things are helping the even even the smaller and medium sized the fleet owners uh, make a, a, a lot of use of the data and better efficiency for the business and better efficiency, you know, for 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 the logistics of the business. We did talk about how the data gets stored and computed in in the cloud. Uh, certain cities and certain governments will say, well, you know, the data should really reside on our territory. How do you manage that challenge? Do you uh, work with public cloud and not knowing where the data is going? Or do you enable a city to also uh, work with autonomous on it, within its own uh, cloud practice boundaries? Today, when you are setting up a, a cloud instance, you can set a dedicated, a region dedicated a cloud instance that is exactly the, your provider, whether it is uh, Amazon or Azure, would allow you to have an instance that doesn't, uh, that doesn't sync uh, multiple continents. So you can have a European Union dedicated instance. It will not be running in the US. It will be running from Frankfurt or from Ireland or from wherever you choose to have an instance. And it would only leave the data there. And I don't know if you know, but Autonomo is working very tightly with uh, BMW, Daimler, with FCA. So we came across this uh, issue two, three years ago. Part of what our platform does is make sure those instances are isolated. So you will work with the likes of uh, Microsoft Azure and determine some availability zones that are linked to the physical geography where this data is being used, right? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. If, if you work with European and uh, American car manufacturers, you cannot evade this issue. 
And we, we had to deal with it early on. And by the way, this is part of the great things of working in the cloud. If we had to set our own data center separately everywhere, uh, the cost and the maintenance cost and, and, and you know, the, is, is, is huge. Asaf, I understand that uh, through the public clouds, you can ensure sovereignty of the information, privacy and uh, security. Now, certain organizations do want to keep that information for themselves. Fleet operators uh, sometimes have private and sensitive information about their vehicles. Is there a way in the configuration of the platform that you can ensure that this information actually stays within the perimeter of the organization? So definitely. Uh, imagine that on one side of our platform, we have data providers. Those are the car manufacturers, for instance. And on the other side, we have a police force or any kind of fleet operator. And Autonomo is in the middle. We know how to isolate the regions, as I mentioned, uh, in terms of you know European, American, and, and Japanese instances of the system that don't send the data outside of the region. Uh, but we can also guarantee uh, that the data uh, doesn't even stay in our system. So it's only going, running through, going all the, through all the computation and going out to the other side. So there's no data at rest. And this is, uh, in some extreme cases, such as government requirements, does satisfy the requirement that there's no trace left in the system. Autonomo is based in Israel. Do you have offices in, in other uh, cities or countries? We have people in, in uh, New York, in Boston, uh, in, uh, you know, in, in the Bay Area, in Detroit, of course, uh, and in, in very close to Stuttgart and Munich, uh, in the Netherlands. So we have people uh, scattered all over. So your platform is really a, a global one. It's deployed all over the world. Exactly. Autonomo has a portfolio of uh, several hundreds of partners that are our users. Uh, they, they are the ones who need the data. We are the one who are working with them to make sure their services are uh, successful use, using our data. And this collaboration helps us put our efforts into collecting the data and finding those partners and not necessarily into developing services that cities need. We provide the best data uh, access layer that, that a smart city solution can need. And by the way, we do the same for every segment that we work with. Uh, when we are uh, working with uh, certain, uh, you know, fleet management solutions, we are not going to sell in the data into each and every fleet. There are those partners that we have that do chase every fleet, but we are chasing the fleet management solutions, uh, the banking solutions, the, the bank financing solutions, uh, and the value-added services for, you know, the not to talk to each and every fleet. So we, we use a lot of partnering when, when we work uh, in, the, in the different markets we work with. One of your partners in the market is a company called Waycare Tech uh, that actually develops some really interesting solutions, leveraging the platform that Autonomo provides. Tell us a little bit about the partnership you have developed with Waycare Tech. Sure. We, had, we have a very good uh, partnership with Waycare Tech. Uh, our platform is feeding uh, Waycare's uh, platform with uh, vehicle information that is helping Waycare's virtual uh, traffic management center respond to the situation on the road and predict accidents. So they know exactly, uh, you know, if this certain pattern of traffic is returning, the probability of having an accident is higher when cars are driving at a certain speed, a certain part of the road with a certain pattern of braking. And this is definitely a good collaboration where we, we see that the joint efforts are producing, you know, better roads for everyone. So enabling better and safer roads for everyone. I see Waycare Tech has solutions in traffic management, freeway service patrol, first responders. And in all of those solutions, Autonomo then enables some of those use cases to take place? Exactly. You know, there is, an, there, is a, there is a wake your engine where you feed the engine with vehicle data and the engine knows how to uh, predict when it's needed and provide the, the right uh, traffic screens and, and right traffic situation uh, projection when it's needed and, and also do the, the first responder operation uh, when the data is collected by the engine. Autonomous role in this partnership and in enabling those use cases is just the provider of sanitized information so that 
a particular city can then engage with Waycare Tech to improve its world's uh, management? Imagine that the relationship with Waycare are representing many other relationships. Waycare has its own technology and should stay focused on that technology. And Autonomo is making sure that Waker is getting all the information they need without having to strike an engagement and uh, sign a contract and integrate with every OEM and every fleet manager that's collecting the data in order to get the information they need. So they can stay focused on their core business and they use our services. In, uh, and where we are focused on is making the data accessible and giving them the best data possible. Of course, best data possible means that it is, is quality data the right latency of uh, collection, the right frequency, the right accuracy. Um, so all those things are things we are focused on and, and they can stay focused on providing the world with the best uh, virtual traffic management center. And the best insight. So you're like the fuel pump to those solutions that then engage with cities uh, to help them improve um, their road conditions and safety. Exactly. Another important partner to Autonomo is a company called Make My Day App. And Make My Day App claims to help smart route planning uh, for electric vehicles. Tell us how you got connected with Make My Day App and the joint value that you provide to cities. So uh, we, we work with uh, Make My Day again for quite a while. Uh, and while, worker, while, while Waker is using our data to analyze trends, uh, you know, they're using the marketplace data the, 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 you know, to analyze traffic trends, Make My Day are working for a specific driver that needs a better route planning personally. For instance, this is an example of how very good use of consent management hub would, would allow the driver to specifically say, I want to share my data with my electricity company that make my day serving in order for me to get better routes and get faster and more efficiently to my next charging station in order to make sure that I'm driving in the right route and I'm not stuck without electricity. Everybody's talking about the electric vehicle range anxiety. And of course, this is helping deal with that. Autonomo is really at the heart of this transformation of urban mobility, enabling new markets, enabling new services to, to take place. Asaf Weisbrot, Chief Commercial Officer from Autonomo, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pierre. It was a pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Smart and Sustainable City podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're responsible for a Smart City initiative, do reach out. Thank you.